Hey everybody, welcome to day two, Breakfast with Bob from Clash Miami. My name is Bob Babbitt, we're brought to you by S Fuels, Hoka, Master Spas, Deborah Wetsuits, Premium Plus Sports, and of course our Challenged Athletes Foundation. Our next guest from Belgium, Mr. Peter Hemrich. How are you doing, bud? Good, first one of the season, so happy to be here. Yeah, and you got in Monday night. Now, have you raced on the tracks before? Uh, the only time I raced the track was in Daytona, but it's like some years ago. But, yes. Uh, Looks similar, but yeah, this time we have to ride in the inner side of the track, so it will be more technical. Yes. But yeah, let's see what's going to happen. So you were a school teacher. Yes. A school teacher. And when I look back at your, at your career, obviously you've, you've done probably more races than, than most people. True Don't, story. Yes, right? You do a lot, you do a lot of racing. Yeah. But there was, when you raced Daytona years ago, and you had, wasn't it a sprint finish? With, or not but sprint, no, but it you, was, it was not, you and Andrew. Uh, I think me and Andrew, and I think Cameron Wirth also was there, right? Yes. Think. But I think that race was my last race as, uh, yeah, as combining the sport with teacher. Right. And I think, yeah, from January after, I was a professional athlete. So yeah. that race winning at Daytona, that changed everything for you? Not that race in particular, but the season before. Yes. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, something special. And yeah, I, li I love to race on a track. So that's also the reason why I'm here. And so the year before, or that season before, was, are we talking 2018 South Africa, 70.3 yep. World Championships? Exactly. Uh, Jan Ferdano, Alistair Brownlee, Hom Javier Gomez. And ben Canute, I think, was fourth, and then me was uh, fifth. Ben, yep. ben was, yeah, Ben Canute got fourth. I think he got fourth. Yeah, he got fifth. fourth, and you got yep. fifth. And we're talking that, you know, Jan ran 106, Alistair ran 107, and Javier ran 108. Uh, and you're right in the mix with these guys. Yeah, and that was the reason when I, I, or not the reason, but one of the results, my sponsor said, like, we're going to try to give you a chance to become professional. Yes. And, uh, yeah, since then, like, ups and downs. But now last year was, again, a year of ups, yes. mostly. So uh, now back in the, good to, uh, in the good part of the game. Right. And uh, trying to start again. On the on the right side, I, on 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 this uh, on this way. <laughs> so when I look at this last year, you you win Ironman Portugal, and we're talking a, a two thirty five marathon, forty four minutes, four twenty three, two thirty five, seven fifty. Uh, you just seem to be getting better. Uh, are you surprising yourself with the fact that you're getting better with age? Uh, the thing was, like in the beginning of the season, the, the start was not that good. But yeah, like from I think one of the best races from last year was also like Ironman Hamburg, yeah, uh, European Championship. Second. Then I think it was so a ro such a roller coaster of a race. I think we were like with three guys running for second place. Yes. And yeah, if one of those three guys is Jan Frodeno, you know it's a fun race. Um, but yeah, from then I started to believe again. Like okay, I'm I'm really part of the better athletes. Yes. And from then, yeah, it was a very good season. Some ups, some downs, uh, but in particular, very good results. Only, so yeah, the only thing I was not so good was maybe the World Championships in Nice. But yeah, coming back sick after Singapore was maybe not the oh, best preparation you got, you <laughs> to get sick. Uh, you got sick in Singapore. I was one of the guys who was sick from Singapore. Yes. But uh, yeah, okay, that happens. It does happen. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Yeah, and it's, it's interesting because Hamburg and Challenge Roth are pretty close together. And so you were, you were signed up to do both. You get second at Hamburg, 237, 731, incredible race. And then obviously DNF at, uh, at, at, at Challenge Roth. Do you put yourself, sort of put yourself out of feel, God, I feel good, I'm gonna go sign up for something else. True, and uh, now I made uh, the, yeah, the appointment with my trainer. He's now the boss. Yes. And we're gonna try to, don't to. Don't listen to yourself, yeah. listen to him. We've got now a schedule for this year. That's the schedule. Yes. Okay, maybe if you got a flat tire and your race is over because of technical uh, issue, okay, then we can find another race. But if, if, if there is no any reason uh, I accept then and technical, then we're just going to follow the, the schedule and it will be already big enough. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you do a lot of racing. You, yeah. you race a ton. So being able to sit back and not race as much and have somebody else say, uh, Peter, you need to, you need to recover. <laughs> recover isn't something that you, you'd rather just go race somewhere. Yes, but that's the thing I think me and my trainer now found is very good for me. On training, we don't do like the crazy stuff. Yes. And sometimes we really use the, the races as more as a training and we say like, okay, today you're not that fresh as normal. Right. But we go like 
fall out till the eight, till the eight. you you have to finish the race really like you have to be exhausted right um, and that's the reason why I can do a lot a lot of races when you took fifth place at one of the, what we consider one of the epic races of all time with Alistair and 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 uh, Jan and and Javi did did that change your mindset to uh, if I'm with these guys uh, I'm finishing top five in the world I can be one of the best in the world yeah you're still like five, six minutes from first place, right. so you have to f to close the gap, and that's the thing what we now see like maybe like the last one or two years, the the gap's getting smaller and smaller. It really uh, is. I think like also in the T100 races, you can become on a very good day, maybe second place, but uh, for the same money, it's six or seven because the field is so competitive. Yes. And yeah, that's the thing I like. It's yeah. funny because a couple of years ago with the PTO races, I was looking at results differently because it used to be you'd look at podium and I'd be like, well, if somebody's finishing, you know, fifth and sixth in these PTO races, which were, you know, they're still getting thirty, forty thousand dollars for for that, that those fields like going to world championship every single week. Will you be how many of the T100s will you do for the moment? All eight. Oh, the plan is all eight. Yeah. Why not? They're there. Yeah. And yeah, you know the schedule. Why not go to all of them? Yeah, and for me, it's also like it's the first year. And yeah, if you have the chance to race the T100 series, it's really like an honor for me. And yeah, for me, I think like if you get a chance and you like to race, why yes. not all eight? Do you think you're better at the full distance or the, the uh, sort of the 70.3 or T100 distance? I think the T100 distance is really something for me, also with the 20-meter draft zone. Yes. Uh, but if I have to be honest, if they say to me, like, you can race also in three or four weeks of an Ironman, uh, I, li I really <laughs> like to do an Ironman. You like the Ironman. The Man. distance, because it's such a different um, yeah, uh, t type of, uh, not training, but yes. racing. Um, but uh, no, no, I really like to, to go also all out uh, in a full distance. Uh, but yeah, the nice thing is you can still I still combine both distances, so right. that's the job for now, this year. Well, is the goal at the end of the season to do Kona? Because you're already in, yeah. right, for Hamburg? Yes, 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 of course. So, yes. Uh, and that's the cool thing now. If you're already qualified for Kona in Portugal, then it's easy. You, you can plan your season full right. for the, the big goals. And uh, let's see, at the end of the season will be, will be very uh, hard for everybody, I think, because yes. it will be a very long season. And uh, particularly with the two last T100 races and the, the grand final in the end of November. Right. It's like four or five weeks after Kona. But yeah, let's try it. Well, and then, then you've got Taupo is what? In, uh, after that in December. Yeah. So it's all, it could be a long season. Yes, for me, Taupo will be like normally not because, yeah, yes. if you now start already early March, end of November, I am no mid December, it's like, mm, mm, are it's we going to do this? And I think if I have to be really honest, the field in, in top will be so much different because a lot of guys who are now maybe trying to uh, be Olympics. very good in the Olympics have now a real focus on that race. And if you have got like a season with maybe six to eight T100 races, you want to do Kona and then yeah, go like maybe a little bit tired to Taupo. I don't know if it's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I think there's a, a number of folks, the Olympics is early enough where someone will jump in and do a, a try to qualify for 70.3 yep. worlds be, before the Olympics. True. And then whatever they, if they make the Olympics or don't make the Olympics, they can focus on that. True. Yeah. So you're gonna have a lot of leg speed coming in. Yes, and I know some guys who are, who are going to try it or, or, or uh, already are qualified, so. <laughs> now, how is the sport doing in Belgium? Is it growing? Uh, the sport is growing, um, but yeah, the thing is like, uh, yeah, for me, myself is now, I know some guys like uh, Martin Varil, yes. who got, was one of the hot picks or yellow gains, uh, both uh, athletes, I, or Martin is going to race the T100, but I think also Yella wants to do be one of the wildcards this season. Yes. So for me now, it's like being uh, yeah, training very hard because I've got now competition coming from, from my your own, own country. country. Yes. And yeah, but that's of course, that's good. Um, I think for us, the sport in Belgium is, is, is OK, but like maybe from media attention. Yeah, we are like more football and cycling country. Right. The only moments uh, our sport is getting more in the national television is maybe with Kona. Right. And for the rest, yeah, you have to do something very special to have like the attention you normally would get, I think, in another sport. Right. But that's the thing. I'm not doing it for the attention on television. I just love the sport. You love the sport. And I learned in through all those years with all the ups and all the downs. Yeah. 
the, the, the national media, they know you when you're doing very good. And if you're like having a very bad year, they don't know you. And you are, when you're going back on that uh, pot, then they're back there. And then you think like, yeah, why only come when you're doing the good uh, races? But yeah, that's life. Eh? So when you were teaching and then trying to balance training for triathlon, were you racing as an age grouper or were you, you were no, racing I was as a professional. Pro? Yeah, you're yeah, professional yeah. and yeah. teaching at the same time. Yeah. That's but hard. Yeah, but it was fun. You like, what'd you teach? Uh, sports, for uh, the young children, okay. the PE between teacher. Six, uh, six and 12 years old. That's what I did, I was a PE yeah. teacher. So, and I liked and it, and that's also one of the things I'm now doing back good, I think, is because now every Wednesday, uh, Wednesday I give like one hour running uh, really? coaching to the kids from the, uh, not from the school, but kids from the streets and yes. from, yeah, from like- From uh, your hometown. Yeah, from a hometown, and sometimes we are with 15, sometimes almost 20 now. And it's like every Wednesday I want to do one hour of it. Yes. And like now this week it's like, oh, Peter is not there, but then like my neighbor is doing the lessons. <laughs> and yeah, for me it's something like now I've got still something else next to the sport. I've got two kids, two dogs, <laughs> the, the one hour <laughs> running coaching. And yeah, but that's the things, the small things that make a big difference because you really can refocus. And yeah, it, this is fun, Triton racing. Yes. But it's not all. <laughs> well, and it can be, it can be overwhelming. You, yeah. you, can, you can start going down that slippery slope where it's all about you and it's all about your last workout. And when you're doing running classes and you see how much these kids, the yes. joy that they're getting and the improvement that you're true. seeing, that, that fills you up. Yeah, true. And uh, that's also one of the reasons I'm not going to stop with it. <laughs> no, why would you? It's, uh, yeah. it, what's nice is it, it gives you sort of that balance. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, how old are your kids? Uh, three and seven. Oh, so yeah, yeah. is a seven year old starting to think about running a little bit and things like that? <laughs> yeah, I think like two weeks ago, he said to, to his mom, like, yeah, I want to run again five kilometer with my dad. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it's something for after this race. Yes. Uh, no, but he's interested in sports. But I'm more like the, the parent who is not going to push him. If no. he wants to go running, he can go running. If he wants to go swimming, we who cares? Yeah, yeah. He can go swimming. But for me also, like, I only started to train really for triathlon was when I was 18 years old. Yes. So my opinion is, okay, they have to learn the sports when they're young. Because, yeah, if you have, like, a swim background, it's much more easier to become Way a good tri triathlete. Yes. But, uh, yeah, it's his, it's his life. And, of course, I hope he's going to do maybe someday triathlon. Uh, and the other also. But yes. uh, that's their choice. Tell them to play golf or tennis. There's more money. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think when they see their dad always going to the pool, yes. biking, running, yeah, yes. they always say to their uh, classmates, yeah, my dad doesn't have to work, he has to swim, bike and run, he's <laughs> he, all the time he's got holidays, <laughs> and I think like, okay. It's not holidays. It's not holidays. <laughs> <laughs> That's hard too when, you're, yeah. when you're work, your work is to go out for a bike ride, True. and your wife's home with the kids. Yeah, Most of the time, yeah. yeah right, <laughs> and it's like, it's hard, it's different if you're going to an office, you're out of sight, out of mind, but it's like, True. oh, there's dad, he's there, yeah. let's play, mm -hmm. you're here. Yes, but uh, I think we really found a very good combination of uh, the sports and uh, family life in particular. I always, always also try to train all my training between the school hours. Yes. So I've got a lot of time for them, but yeah, of course, if the season's getting closer, weekends are filled up with a lot of training. And then you have to yeah, count on your wife because she's doing yeah, also a full-time job in uh, also on school. Wow. But then she's got like, yeah, maybe like 99% of the kids for her. And yeah, that's uh, also the less nice part of the sport because yeah, she has to do a lot of sacrifices. So the hardest part when you don't get into a sport like triathlon until you're 18 is the swimming and becoming good enough because at the ITU level, Yep. If you're not a great swimmer, the race is over. You, can't, you have to be with those guys out of the water. Did, when you first got into triathlon, were you thinking more of the Olympics? Or you always one year, longer? One year I was uh, thinking, like, why not maybe like the ITU racing? But the thing with me is I don't like big groups. If you uh, now would put me like in a group of 100, the chance is very big you will see me somewhere on the left or somewhere on the right <laughs> that I've got an escape route. And I don't have to tell you, if you got a field from ITU with 60, 70 guys, first buoy is like two, 300 meters. <laughs> Chance is big, like I will be like somewhere in the back. You'll let them go. Yeah. And because you don't want to get beat up. Yep. And what's very nice with the T100 series, there's only 20 athletes. And that's, that's for me. That's a great point. Yeah, for me, it was like uh, some dream coming through, like only 20 athletes for the first buoy. Oh, perfect. <laughs> you know what? That's interesting. I hadn't really thought about that, yeah. but it's really... 
because like you said, 20 meter draft rule, you're doing your own thing. Yes. And so it doesn't really, uh, you're not dealing with the armed combat like you normally do. Yeah, there, there can be some combat, but it will be not- yeah, one uh, person. Yeah, and it won't be, um, yeah, your not wall race will be determined by one action. Yes. You've got time enough to, to come back to the front. And that's, uh, yeah, for me it was like eight races, eight times with only 20, or, or the grand final with some more. But yeah, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so the the fact that you're starting your season so early, how are you? How ready are you to be on the podium? It's it, I mean this is a this is basically a world championship field. A lot yes. of times when you start your season this early, there's three or four other top guys there. This time you got you got everybody. Yes. And the thing is also like like I said, I, I yeah, the first lost heat for me was maybe like Nice, I think, because yes. Portugal was not a warm warm race. Yes. So for me, I didn't went on training camp. The only training camp I did was with, with my trainer in Czech Republic in yes. minus 10 degrees. So <laughs> yeah, it was only like a camp in snow. Uh, but for me, it's also a choice that I really use. Like, you know, for me, it's, it's normal when I see all the social media and I see all the guys going to the uh, Lanzarote, uh, Lanzarote yeah, yeah, yeah. or Tenerife, Gran Canaria. Think like, yeah, I can do it. But the, the bad thing with me is like, I don't like to travel. I don't like to be away from home. And for me, if you already are doing eight of the T100 races, yes. you want to go to Kona and you start seeing your schedule and you're like, oh, oh, that's a lot of days that I won't be home. Yes. For me, then it's more like a logical uh, solution not to go on training camp and do everything at home. And uh, on that way, I try to yeah, find the balance. And I think it worked this uh, winter because uh, my times in the swimming pool really improved. I did a 10 kilometer run in London two weeks ago in, in a personal best. So yeah, that are two things that give a good sign for the start of the season. Right. But at the end, like you said, it's a world class field. And yeah, I think for everybody, it's not, this race won't uh, determine your whole season. No, uh, it's a long season. You've got season. eight races for count for your ranking. But of course, if you start, if you come to the U.S., you want to do good. Of course you do. Yeah. You love it. Peter, have a great time out there on, Thank on you. Saturday. It's going to be fun in the middle of the day watching a race. True. And uh, yeah, also for uh, the Belgian fans, it's perfect because for them, it's then uh, 7 o'clock in the evening. Oh, perfect. So they just can uh, open television and uh, see the race on uh, Saturday evening. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Peter Hemrick has been our guest. Thank you again, Peter. Thank again, you. Breakfast with Bob, day two from Clash Miami. Hold on, we will be right back. <laughs>